Yate, everybody. Yate. Yate is additional Navajo greeting. It's like saying hello. It literally means walk in beauty. So not only is it a Navajo greeting, but it's also a Navajo prayer. So I say Yate to everybody. At the very beginning, I talk about who I am, Father Mike Carson. I work with the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops in Washington, D.C. And I'm the point person for Native American Indian ministry uh, throughout the country. So I'm here to talk about our mission appeal today. I'd like to uh, thank Father Pines for allowing me to do that, to this mission appeal. Okay, first, uh, the gospel. The gospel has a lot of things to say about uh, what I want to talk about. And that is uh, Christ. Christ is saying that uh, he needs to suffer first and be raised. Then uh, Peter takes a stance of that and says, no, he can't do that. Because in Peter's mind, the idea back then of the Messiah was when he comes, there's going to be joy, celebration, a year of jubilee, all that good stuff. And then Christ saying that it's something different. As also goes with our lives, sometimes we get problems and difficulties, some troubles and concerns. And then we say, hey, why is this happening? And Christ doesn't promise us that we have a good life. Sometimes we'll have to struggle in our lives. But Christ does talk, promise us, will give us great peace in our heart, the kindness and compassion in our heart that Christ gives us as a special gift. So we can go through our problems, our difficulties, and our concerns. Now in my ministry, I've been around with people with a lot of problems and concerns and very difficult uh, mission and ministry in their lives. But they do have this great peace of heart, Christ, uh, with them, and they carry that throughout their ministry. Not only in Dax Gallup, but throughout the, throughout the country, working with the Indians, with the Native Americans. So a little bit about what I'm going to talk about, and that's the Diocese of Gallup today. The Diocese of Gallup was founded in 1939 by Pope Pius X. Now, before he became Pope, uh, Pope uh, Pius came to this country, to the Southwest. He thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to make one diocese with all these reservations, the major reservations in the Southwest? So when it was spoke, that's what he did. He made a big circle and circled up all the major reservations of the Indians in the Southwest and put them in one diocese. That's the Diocese of Gallup. That was a great idea because then the diocese still does today concentrates on Native American ministry because they have the Hopi Reservation, the Navajo, which is the largest reservation, and the Zuni and the Pueblos as well. That was a great idea, uh, but there's also concern there because he also circled up some of the poorest places in the United States, which makes it very difficult to run a diocese, even in the Catholic Church, when people are, are that poor. And in fact, it's the poorest diocese in the United States. It doesn't rely upon uh, myself in terms of mission appeals. So I need to help uh, my good friend, Bishop Wall, who's a bishop of the Diocese of Gallup, in these mission appeals to help support the diocese. Okay, has anybody been to the Southwest? Raise your hand to uh, New Mexico, Arizona, a couple people. Okay, has anybody been to the Four Corners area? This is where four states come together. You've been there? All right. Because that's where I got my start in Native American ministry. Just part of the uh, Navajo Nation, part of the Navajo Reservation. Now, my story is this. I was, uh, I'm originally from San Jose, California. I was a pastor in my church in San Jose, California. And I got a call from my good friend, Father Dan Cassis. Now, Father Dan was originally from the Bay Area, from California. But he wanted to be a missionary to the Indians, so he got hooked up with the Diocese of Gallup. Now his, his concern was he was about to be pastor of Christ King Shiprock in the Navajo Nation. And he's going to replace four Franciscan priests, and he's going to be the only priest. And he had uh, three churches and two parishes, and they were some 30 miles apart. So in order for him to celebrate Mass on Sunday with all these different churches, he needs somebody to help out. So I made arrangements for my bishop back home to do that, especially during the summertime, which I did. I remember driving from California to, uh, to New Mexico, to the Four Corners area, to Christ King Shiprock. Now my first impression of arriving into the parish was the incredible beauty of the place. This place is really incredibly beautiful, especially during sunrises and sunsets, when the sun gets behind a thundercloud. The entire sky turns into these reds and oranges and purples and blues. It's quite a unique and a very special place. 
Now, the place itself, uh, about 30 miles from Four Corners with the San Juan River running through it, there's just a gigantic valley. In the middle of the valley, there's this gigantic rock sticking way up, about three to 400 feet. It's actually an extinct volcano. Now, if you use your little imagination, you can see the top of the rock kind of looks like a ship. That's why the town gets its name of Ship Rock. Now, not all believe that it's just this gigantic bird, this monster bird, kind of nosedived in the desert, and its, fe so its tail feathers are sticking up. That's what they believe. Now, it's right under Mesa Verde, so you can see Mesa Verde, the green mesa, in the background, which is quite beautiful in Colorado. Now, beyond the, the beauty of the place, my second impression was the incredible poverty of the place. These people are really, really poor. Uh, I was warned about this by the pastor, but I remember my first night there, I was cooking my dinner, right? And I heard a knock on the door. And I went to the door, and there's a long line of people, some 15 to 70 people all lined up. Now what they wanted was water. They didn't have any inside plumbing in their houses, they didn't have a well, so they needed water. So after I gave permission, they took the hose from the garden and filled up these gallon jugs of water put them in their cars and bring back to their houses so they have water. Now, I was there for a couple years and I was also uh, back home being a pastor in my own parish. And we organized my own parish in California a caravan of vehicles to help out the, the Navajo. So we loaded up uh, blankets and uh, clothing and toys for kids in these cars and a big caravan to New Mexico. Now, the, the parish here, Christ King on Chiprock, that was our headquarters. I wanted to go to what's called the Deep Res. Now these are houses and towns outside the major cities. And so we had to hire these four-wheel drive vehicles because the Navajo have a very loose definition of exactly what a road is. Usually it's just a path out in the desert. So we need these four-wheel drive vehicles to get us there. So as we arrived to these houses, my people realized first that there's no windows or doors because they could not be they could not afford windows or doors. So they just had the blankets where the windows or doors should have been. Now it gets very cold there in that part of the Colorado Plateau. It's 5,000 feet, so it snows there during the winter time, and most winter it's below freezing. They just had these uh, these uh, blankets to keep in the heat in the wood fire stoves. Of course, there's no uh, electricity and no running water either. So my people back home became very concerned about this. So we organized ways to build uh, doors and windows just to keep in the heat, especially for, for the kids to keep them warm during the winter time. Now, I was there for a couple, uh, a couple months and I realized also there's a great need for evangelization. Not all the nation is the largest reservation in the United States, but there are actually very few Catholic. They were evangelized quite late in the late 1800s by Catholic Drexel and Cincinnati Franciscans. That's why very few of them are Catholic. So I was there and I was preaching occasionally we'd have a funeral and the entire church would be crowded, but very few of them would be Catholic. When I preach, I talk about the forgiveness, the love, the transformation of Christ being brought into heaven. Because traditionally in a novel belief, there, there is a lot of fear about death. They don't talk about death. They stay away from cemeteries. They just don't want to deal with the subject of death. Because in their traditional belief, they believe if somebody dies, what makes them a good person, that good part goes up to a sort of heaven. But the bad part, called a chin li, stays around where they die, and like a poltergeist, causes mischief. That's why the novel just stay away for, from death, because they're afraid of this chin li. So when I talk about them, I say, no, that's not the Catholic belief at all. We believe very strongly that we're transformed by Christ, embraced by Christ, and taken up into heaven. Well, that really speaks to their heart, and say they want to hear more about that, and have a lot of people after Mass who really want to hear more about the Catholic belief. Now, unfortunately, there's just so few priests, those sisters and deacons, and religious brothers on the reservation. They do fabulous work, but they certainly need a lot more because it's like a sponge. They want to hear about the Catholic belief especially the love, the forgiveness, and compassion of God, of Christ. That becomes very, very important to them. So the Dice of Gallup does both. They do a lot of work uh, trying to relieve poverty in the reservation, reservations, but they also do an incredible amount of work for the evangelization. 
they have wonderful people. So uh, there's your opportunity to help after Mass. There's a, two, uh, there's a basket on each exit for this uh, second collection for you to help the, the Navajo and also the Diocese of Gallup. But while with their funds, they especially need your prayers uh, because they can't do anything without your prayers. And I need your prayers in my own ministry, helping not only the, uh, the Indians in the, the Southwest, but across the country. Because my job is dealing with incredible people who are so committed to Christ and they're doing, as the gospel says, carrying the cross daily as they minister to these wonderful people. So keep praying for me and especially the people I work for. Now some of you might be called to work with uh, the reservations in the Southwest. So the, the Dice Gallup has a wonderful uh, web page that you can uh, uh, hook up to. And then say, perhaps I'm being called to help out with the Indians in the Southwest, and they certainly have opportunities. So uh, that's when I talk with you about the Mission Appeal. And I greatly appreciate uh, you working with uh, the Native Americans and praying for us as we work for the poorest of the poor.